Agricultural School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Okay, we're here with Angela Brackenreed of the Canola Council of Canada, and we are going to talk about uh, canola storage. So welcome here. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, so, you know, we're here into late October, and, and certainly the weather has started to cool off, and we've had some moisture, uh, but canola did certainly go into the bin, uh, certainly Manitoba, but other prairie provinces as well, uh, quite hot. And uh, so... so what is safe for canola in the long term as far as temperature and moisture? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> safe storage of canola really is dependent both on temperature and moisture content, um, and you can't really separate the two. So when we're talking about safe storage, a lot of people talk about 8% moisture content being safe for long-term storage of canola. Um, but you need to remember that you need to think also about the temperature. And yeah, like you said, um, a lot of canola went in the bin this year at 30 plus degrees. So um, really important to consider what the temperature was. Um, so what we look at for temperature for safe long-term storage at 8% moisture content is 15 degrees Celsius or less. Um, so, I mean, when you're looking at those 30 plus temperatures or 25 plus temperatures, even 8% moisture content is no longer considered safe for long-term storage of canola. Okay. And so um, what are some things farmers can do? Um, you know, they've obviously been busy wrapping up harvest and those sorts of things, but now is, is likely uh, a good time to head back out and maybe check on some of these bins. Um, if you've got a, a, a pretty big bin, how much of it do you need to take out to, say, turn it? Like, let's say you're a little concerned that maybe the, the middle of the bin is still a bit hot. Um, you know, how much is enough to kind of turn that bin? Yeah, I'm, no matter the size of the bin, I really recommend ter taking out at least a third of that bulk. Um, this is one of the things that no matter how, like what type of setup you have, whether you have the perfect storage setup or a less than ideal setup, I think this is um, one of the best things you can do and I recommend it to everyone. Um, it really just um, lets you take a good look at it yourself. And it also can let better air circulate through the, the bin itself and the bulk that you pulled out. Um, can drop the temperature a little bit. I mean, if you did it on a, a cool day like today, it's going to drop the temperature, let air circulate a bit, bit better throughout it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and another thing, actually, is you can get a good smell, <laughs> which yeah. seems funny. But um, yeah. if you're having a heating going on in the bin, you'll notice that smell right away if you pull it out. So... Yeah, that, I think um, turning the bulk is really, really important. Okay. And, I mean, again, we are here uh, end of October. Um, you know, when when do you suggest that farmers, you know, if they've been checking on their bins or have turned their bins or those sorts of things, I mean, is it reasonable to expect within the next couple of weeks these bins should be, you know, kind of reaching equilibrium? Or, or are we really talking about you need to be sure that that bin is cool and dry? And, yeah, and that I think going weeks, into, yeah. into winter, it's really important that we're getting a stable temperature throughout the bin, a uniform temperature throughout the bin. Um, so yeah, as it starts to cool off outside, uh, the last thing you want to see, especially when we start getting snow, is you come out and the it's all melted off the roof of your bin. So you want to be sure that you are stable going into winter and continue monitoring closely for the next couple of weeks, I would say. Um, and ensure as the temperature outside starts dropping that the temperature of your bulk is dropping. Right. Um, you know, if you're seeing drastic drops in temperature outside, you also should be seeing a corresponding drop with the, the canola itself. Um, canola has the ability to retain temperature for a really long time, mm -hmm. um, but you want that temperature to be dropping gradually. And if it's not, that's a sign that um, some heating is going on and, and will lead to spoilage. Right. And now what are maybe um, a couple of the things that might uh, make heating more of an issue or more of a risk? Uh, well, certainly higher moisture contents and higher temperatures. Um, when you have higher temperature, uh, this makes complete intuitive sense, but with high, higher temperature, um, it's more suitable for biological activities. So um, if it's warmer in there, it's just more suitable for little creatures and things to be propagating, and that's the last thing that you want in your bin. Um, 
Uh, one thing to mention is in the winter, uh, air movement in the bin is a little bit different. So when the ambient temperature is lower, like we're probably seeing now than the, the canola itself, you see warm air kind of move up through the central core of the bin and moisture will likely accumulate at that top central core. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a good place to start checking if um, you're not really sure where to check. Okay. And uh, if, if you've got relatively, uh, let's say, a less than clean uh, field that came off, uh, is, is green material or weed seeds or anything like that going to increase the risk of spoilage or, or heating? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a really good reminder for people. I think we kind of forget every year that um, dockage, like weed seeds or insect parts, can contain up to 4% more moisture content than the canola itself. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I really like to remind guys of is when you're weighing off that sample to take the moisture content, don't start brushing away those chaff parts and insect parts. I know sometimes I even have done that. You think, well, why weigh this off, right? Um, but it's really important because that is going to contribute to your overall moisture content if you're binning it. I mean, you can't clean out all that chaff and all those insect parts. So you want to make sure that when you were testing your moisture content that you included that in there. Um, because, yeah, like I said, up to 4% higher moisture content. If you thought you were at 6% 6, 6 of your canola, that could be 10. So Yeah, and could could end up being a problem. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. yeah, okay, this is great. Thanks, Angela. Thank you very much.